G'day everyone. In this video, I'm gonna be working through a Suzuki service bulletin, which was released in 2009 with the subject steering vibration on the SN413 or JB43 Jimneys. And we're of course talking about that infamous Jimny death wobble. Specifically, the service bulletin reads, steering wheel starts vibrating when cruising at around 80 kilometers an hour or applying the brakes and vibration would not stop until speed was accelerated to over 90 kilometers an hour or decelerated to under 60 kilometers an hour. And this is consistent with what we've been finding on our 2008 Jimny. Once we get up to around that 80 to 85 kilometer an hour speed, the death wobble starts kicking in, the steering wheel is vibrating, and it won't go away unless we slow down. So the service bulletin provides a couple of corrections for this. The first was that they introduced a new front leading arm bushing, which we actually installed in episode five of our rebuild and restoration series. So check that out if you haven't already seen it. And that had an improved spring characteristic versus the original part, which was intended to reduce vibration through that front suspension system. But the second part of this service bulletin, which is what we're going to be looking at today, was the introduction of shims for the front knuckle bearings, also known as the kingpin bearings. And by shimming these bearings, you can actually adjust the amount of preload and therefore the amount of friction on that steering system. Within the bulletin, they provide a workflow, which we'll go through now. And the first part depends on whether your vibration is happening under braking or not. And for us, it's not. It's only when we get up to that speed. But if it is for you, you first want to measure the thickness of the brake disc, specifically to determine whether it's within the standard values provided in the service manual and if it is we're going to grind the brake disc if not we need to replace the brake disc with a new one and we're talking about the two front brake discs here the reason that we're doing this is to make sure that there's no warping or uneven wear in the brake disc which when the brake pads are applied would create a vibration through those front wheels assuming that's not the problem though we're going to move on to the next step which is going to be to balance the wheels and we've actually already had the wheels balanced and that hasn't turned out to be the problem but make sure you do that first if you're experiencing the death wobble next we're going to replace the bushings, the front leading arm bushings that is, with the new part number, which we've already done in that last episode. We did find that it improved the handling a bit, but it didn't completely fix the issue for us. Assuming the problem still hasn't disappeared, we're going to move on to shimming the kingpins. It's worth saying here that this is not a substitute for worn kingpins. If you haven't already replaced the kingpin bearings and the kingpins, make sure you do that before you start looking at shims and see if that makes the problem go away. I'll quickly run through all the tools and parts we need to do the job, but if you want to jump forward, there'll be a full list along with timestamps down in the description below. I've got a metric socket set with 10, 12, 17, and 19 millimeter sockets, and a couple of torque wrenches to go along with those. For cleaning up the parts, I've got some paper towel, some brake and parts cleaner, a small wire brush, and a razor blade. And I've also got a couple of 300 mil cable ties there. I've got some nitrile gloves and some safety glasses for protection. Then over here, we've got a ball joint separator tool for our tire rod and relay rod ends or alternatively you can use a brass or copper hammer and a regular hammer. Down here we've got a spring tension gauge which we're going to need to measure the starting force on our knuckle bearings or alternatively you can get away with a fish scale. It needs to be good for about five kilos or 50 newtons. Then I've got some RTV silicone. This is a Permatex Ultra Black and lastly you need up to four of the Suzuki shims. They're a 0.5 millimeter shim and I'll put the part number on screen. The first step is going to be to jack under the front axle housing and get jack stands under both sides. I'm happy with how that's sitting, so I'm going to whip the two front wheels off with my 19mm socket. All right, so I've got you mounted up in the front wheel well now. This is on the passenger side and we're looking at the back side of the knuckle. So I'm gonna start by removing the brake caliper up here. For that, we've just got two 17 millimeter bolts on the back side. Then we're just gonna need one of those cable ties that we grabbed earlier. You want to cable tie the brake caliper to the spring, just so it's not hanging by the brake hose. So that's going to expose the upper knuckle bearing cap here with these four 12 millimeter bolts that we're going to remove. I've just placed some newspaper down because we might get some grease or silicone dripping. Take note that you've got this bracket for the vacuum hoses that needs to go back on after. 
Now at this point, the bearing cap should be free to come off, but I can see I've got my silicone there from a recent install. So that might be sticking it down at the moment. I'm just gonna take a flat blade screwdriver and very carefully try and wedge that bearing cap off without damaging the mating flange. I can just see that started to break free now and I can lift it out. Now you wanna be very careful not to get any dirt in here cause that's gonna go straight into the knuckle into the bearings in there. This is where that razor blade comes in handy. So you can use that just to clean off any old RTV that was still on there. We're gonna be replacing that with new silicon today. Next we need to clean that kingpin. So I'm gonna start by wiping any grease off of there. Now we've got RTV silicon around the base of it here that I'm gonna clean off using a combination of the razor blade and a brass wire brush. I'm using a brass brush specifically, not steel, because it won't scratch the steel of the kingpin bearing, it'll just clean it off. Brass is a relatively soft metal. Then lastly, I'm just gonna give those parts a bit of a wipe with some break and parts cleaner on some paper towel. Now the service bulletin says to install one of these 0.5 millimeter shims on each of the left and right upper king pins and then to check whether the problem's gone away. And if it hasn't, you can then install a second one of those shims, but to go for no more than two shims on either side. So that's four shims in total. So I've slipped that shim over there. Now I'm gonna put some silicone around the base here and then we can reinstall that king pin. So I've got my Permatex Ultra Black. I'm gonna run a thin bead around where the cylinder at the bottom meets the mating flange. And this is just gonna seal any grease from coming out. Make sure you don't get any on the top here because that's what's going to go into the bearing. I'm going to pop that back down into the bearing. Then I've got my four 12 millimeter bolts that we removed. I'm going to pop them back in. Now I'll grab my torque wrench and the torque spec for these ones is 18 foot pounds or 25 Newton meters. Make sure you go in a crisscross pattern to compress that RTV evenly. So at this point, we would do the same thing to the other side, add the one shim, check if the problem's gone away, and then we can add a second shim to both sides if we need to. As per the service bulletin, we just need to check and make sure we haven't put too much preload on these bearings. And the way that we check that is to measure the amount of force it takes to start turning the steering arm. But before we can do that, we need to remove the tie rod, the drag rod, and the oil seal from the back of the knuckle, because all of those things are gonna affect our ability to freely rotate that knuckle and how much force it takes to turn it. On the passenger side you'll have both the tie rod and the drag rod so two ball joints to break but on the driver's side you'll only have the tie rod. I'll grab my 17 mil socket I'm going to start with the tie rod over here and I'm going to loosen off that nut. You might find you have a castellated nut on these in which case you'll have to remove the split pin first before you can loosen the nut. I'm going to be replacing these with castellated nuts shortly. This is where your ball joint separator tool comes in handy. You slide the forks in under the ball joint and then the top piece is going to press down on that stud and press it out through the hole. These are really good if you've got a particularly stuck tie rod or drag rod end and it's the method that we showed in our swivel hub rebuild video. But today I'm just going to show using a copper hammer, copper because it's soft metal and you can either tap on the steering arm or you can place it on top of the stud and then hit that with a steel hammer to force the stud down through the steering arm. Just like that, it's popped through. That's a bit more difficult if it's particularly seized. That's where your ball joint separator tool will come in handy. I've had this apart quite recently. If you wanna know how to change your tie rod ends or your drag rod ends, or if you notice that these rubber boots here are leaking a lot of grease, check out episode five of our rebuild and restoration series where I change these out. So onto the drag rod now. Same thing again, copper hammer, pop that out. And now that's free to move. So now we just need to remove the eight 10 millimeter bolts holding the knuckle seal onto the back of the knuckle because that's gonna allow us to rotate that knuckle freely. So just grab a 10 mil socket and we'll whip these ones off. Make sure you don't damage the seal because we're gonna be putting it straight back on after. So I've got my knuckle seal cover plate there with a felt on it. And behind that, you've got a rubber seal that you just want to pop away as well. 
So you can see there the rubber seals popped away and the steel ring that sits behind it. And we're just gonna hang them on the axle housing behind. So back to the service bulletin. After adding the shim, removing the oil seal and the tie rod and drag rod, which are assembled on the steering knuckle, we wanna shake the knuckle left and right around 20 to 30 times. So we're just gonna rotate that back and forth, making sure it's moving smoothly. Now it shouldn't move easily. There should be a bit of resistance, but it should be nice and smooth. So now we're gonna check that we don't have too much preload on these bearings. And the way that we do that is we take our spring tension gauge or a fish scale. We're gonna pop it into the hole for the tie rod end with our wheel nice and straight. And we're gonna see how much force it takes pulling at 90 degrees. So you've got your wheel forward and back and you're pulling left and right to make it just start. And we want that to be less than 45 Newtons or 4.6 kilos of force. So you wanna slowly increase the amount of force and see when it starts to move. You might have to do it a couple of times just to make sure you're getting a consistent reading. And I can see there that it's definitely starting to move after less than 45 newtons, so that's good. The bulletin states that if the startup load is more than 45 newtons, it might cause loss of steering returning performance and or damage the kingpin bearing. So I'm happy that that's within spec. I'm gonna do the same job to the other side, put everything back together and then take the car for a drive. I'm not gonna show the job on the other side because it is exactly the same. The only difference is that on the driver's side, you only have the tie rod, whereas on the passenger side, you have the drag rod as well. So I'm going to start reassembling the knuckle seal now. Steel ring in first, which recesses into the back of the housing, followed by my rubber seal. Once they're all in loosely, we can snug them down with a 10 mil socket. Now you don't want to over tighten these ones because you might snap them. There is a torque spec. It's 7.5 foot pounds, which is 10 Newton meters. Then we can pop our tie rod back up and in. You might just need to rotate the knuckle to line up the hole. Snug each of those down. Then the torque spec for both your tie rod ends and your drag rod is 32 foot pounds or 43 Newton meters. Now, if you did have castellated nuts with split pins, make sure you replace those split pins with new ones. Now, just before I put the brake caliper back on, I'm gonna give the brake disc a quick wipe with some brake and parts cleaner, just cause I have bumped it with my greasy hands. Then we're gonna cut that cable tie and slip the brake caliper back down over the disc. Then we can grab our two 17 millimeter bolts and pop them back in. There is a torque spec for these as well, and it's 62 foot pounds or 85 Newton meters. I've just turned the wheel to allow me to get my torque wrench in there. All right, so I've just finished doing the job on the other side and I've got it all back together. Pretty quick once you've done it once. Now it's time to put the wheels back on and get the car back on the ground. Then I'm gonna torque all those wheel nuts up to 72 foot pounds or 100 Newton meters. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you might wanna check out episode three or episode five of our Jimny restoration series, where we did a full swivel hub rebuild, followed by changing out the leading and trailing arm bushings, as well as the tie rod and drag rod ends, all of which are candidates that can help contribute to that steering vibration. If there's something you'd like to see in a future video, we'd love to hear it in the comments down below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.